So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the solver, which is a built-in equation solver that comes with any recent version of Excel. Uh, it was originally written by a third party, as I understand it, and then was incorporated into Excel later. So it's usually used to maximize or minimize functions, um, but you can also use it to set a cell to a particular value. So that's equivalent to root finding or solving equations, nonlinear equations. Um, what's really nice uh, is that it can do what's called constrained optimization. So you can look for a maximum or minimum of a function, but subject to certain constraints on one or more of the input variables. And that's a notoriously difficult problem to do, and the solver does a reasonable job of it. So our sample problem is this. We have a function. Uh, it's a function of two variables, and it's x squared plus y minus 1 squared plus y minus x squared plus 1. And we want to find the minimum of that function for all values of x and y. Uh, then if we can get that to work, we'll do the second problem, which says we want to find the minimum of the same function, but we want to make sure that y is always greater than 1. So we want to minimize f subject to the constraint that y is greater than 1. And I'll actually do greater than equal to 1 because it's a little more straightforward. So it's useful to look at the function first. Um, it's a little tricky plotting these 2D functions in a way that that's uh, instructive, but here's a surface plot of that function, x going from minus 2.5 to 2.5, and y from minus 2.5 to 2.5, and, and you can see that there is a minimum somewhere around here, you know, in the, in the neighborhood of 0, 0. Um, if we look from the top at a contour plot, you can see that um, the minimum occurs somewhere around here, which looks like it's slightly in the positive, positive quadrant for x and y. So when we minimize this, we should expect a solution um, where x and y are positive and, and fairly small, less than 1. Uh, the first thing you have to do is make sure you have access to um, the solver. Uh, it's not automatically there. So the first thing you do in Excel 2007 is go to the Office button, which is that funny little graphic in the upper left corner of Excel. And then click on Excel Options, and then add-ins and then manage Excel add-ins and from there you can see the solver and you click the checkbox and then you should have access to it. It ends up under the data tab in Excel. So then to run the solver you go to that data tab, you click solver and you should get a little dialog box. It looks like this. So um, the first thing you do is you set your target. So you, you're You've got a cell, which is evaluating our function, and you want to either minimize it or maximize it or set it to a value. We're going to click the minimization button to minimize our um, target. And then in, in this box, you, you tell the solver which cells you're going to be changing. So you're going to ask Excel to vary some cells and in order to try to achieve the goal. All right, so we're going to try to vary x and y, uh, wherever whatever cells those are in, in order to minimize our function. Later, uh, when we do the second problem and add constraints, we'll put them in here. Okay, and I'll show you all this in a minute. Uh, once you get all that set up, you just press solve and you're done. All right, so the basic idea for our sample problem is we'll put a guess for x and y into cells A1 and A2. You can put them anywhere you want. Um, then we'll evaluate our function for those guesses, in, and I'll put it in cell A3. Then we run the solver. We say the target is A3. That's our function. Uh, and we want to do it with, achieve the minimum by varying cells A1 and A2. We just tell the solver all that, and then we click solve, and we go. Okay. So it's probably best if I just show you how this works. So here's our sheet. I've got a guess for x in cell A1, a guess for y in cell A2, and then I evaluate the function using those values. And for 0, 0, I get 2 for our f of x and y. So now I go to the Data tab, click Solver. I get our dialog box. Notice the target is already set to cell A3. I just went there to, by clicking on that. I want to minimize the function and I want to sell, change cells. I want to minimize it by changing cells A1 to A2. 
right? So we click solve and we quickly get a solution. It says solver found a solution. All strains and optimality conditions are satisfied. Now one thing uh, that I'll um, point out here is that if if solver does not find a solution it will often put some numbers in here and it'll it'll give you the same kind of gong that that it's that it's done but it'll, it'll say somewhere in here that it didn't find a solution but it doesn't really hit you in the face that it didn't find a solution so you have to be careful to read this solution this results box and make sure um, it found a solution all right so we'll say we like this it worked we'll keep the solver solution instead of restoring our original values we just say okay okay and so the minimum is at one third two thirds and the function evaluates out to one and a third and that's our minimum value right now suppose we want to do the second one where we want to constrain y we go back to the solver and now we want to add a constraint um, we want to constrain cell a2 to be greater than or equal to um, 1. We say OK, and now that constraint is in this box, and now we click Solve again. OK, it says Solver found a solution, OK, and now the minimum we get is 1 and a half at x equals a half and y equals 1. All right. Now we could actually um, put a constraint here of 1, right? Sorry, that's smaller than the other ones. Um, so now when we do our constraint, we can go back to the solver, and we can delete this constraint, add a new one, and we sell, say that cell A2 has to be greater than or equal to cell D2. OK. Now that's set. We solve it we get the same answer. What's nice about that though is now we can say what if we want a constraint to be 2 now we run the solver again and we don't have to change anything because the constraints the same we say solve and now we get a new answer. Alright so that's about it um, you can do some quite um, some, some sub substantially more elaborate problems than what I've done here using the same uh, approach and um, I think it, it really can be a nice tool and, and, and I hope you find it useful. Thanks.